Hey everybody, welcome to the latest edition of Sketchy Goichi. I'm your host, Roger Andrews, and this one in honor of Halloween is Buffy the Vampire Slayer Pop Culture Portrait Sketch, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, done by me, uh, using loads of reference and a little bit of ingenuity and a lot of fun. So, if you want to learn, stay tuned and enjoy. Sketchy Go Ichi. Ah, uh, yes, let's do it. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sarah Michelle Geller. I guess that's probably what, late 90s, very, very early uh, 2000s series on, you know what? I think it was on WV, <laughs> if that even exists anymore. So many streaming channels, so many streaming networks these days. Um, speaking of these days, I imagine this show would be relevant for a younger audience. Um, yes, the look is gonna be dated. Yes, the uh, filming is gonna be dated. Certainly the clothing and the style. But I feel like that you know, that sort of teen angst that's captured in it and the humor and um, I think that's relevant. I don't, <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. And I, I remember, you know, at that time when um, the show came out, I remember thinking to myself, uh, am I to be a little embarrassed watching the show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And then almost everyone that I knew, or at least in my circle, just fell in love with the show and fell in love with the, uh, the kind of quirkiness to it and the, um, you know, and the effects are kind of cheesy, but I don't know, it just seemed to work. Sometimes, you know, it's funny, you, when you think about it, and this kind of relates to art as well, when you think about like really super highly rendered um, effects and essentially what you see now with uh, all the Marvel films, I mean, the fact that they can capture a Thanos <laughs> and it's Josh Brolin, but I mean, you know, doing the voiceover and I guess doing the onset sort of, uh, you know, acting. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's a cartoon character and it's believable. And we've kind of been spoiled by that. I mean, you can only imagine how much effort it takes all the artists to essentially animate a character in with live actors. Um, and it be believable. I mean, a perp giant purple dude. And so when you think back to, again, the late 90s, early 2000s, I mean, it's a television series, limited budget. Um, and I imagine every single episode, the effects team had to struggle to get these sort of vampire effects and, uh, you know, and all the creature makeup and and the action sequences and the, and the stunt core, uh, choreography and all that stuff in place. And they had to make it work with very limited resources. And I kind of feel like that applies to the art. If you think about this character right here, um, or should I say this image that I'm working on right here. Limited resources are, I had, uh, I think, two or three photos that I dug up from, from the internet, from Google Images probably, and I composed this little composition and, you know, haphazardly scratched it together because I knew that I could kind of go in and, you know, make it an illustration, basically. So I knew that I could go in and um, add whatever flavor I needed to add on top. Um, I did the best I could with the limited materials I had. Um, you know, it was unlikely that I was going to be, I had the Marvel budget where I could go and hire a model, or better yet, hire Sarah Michelle Geller to pose for me <laughs> while I did an image of her as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So the point is, you know, no matter where you are in life, where you are with your art, how limited your materials are, how limited your resources are, you do the best at what you, uh, best you can with what you have, and um, essentially just always do your best in regard. You know that's life in general, but um, but let's face it, you can't complain and you can't look back at uh, where you were perhaps in a state of uh, growth when you had very limited, you know, supplies. Uh, perhaps you're like me, you have an older version of the iPad that you're working on to do these sketches. Um, even though I'm blessed and fortunate to be able to buy a new one, I sort of, I'm making do with what I have, at least for now. And um, that's a lesson to you all uh, as artists whenever you're rendering this. Um, you know, forgive me, I kind of went off on a tangent, but um, you know, to get back to the how to draw part of the show, um, it's gonna be the broken record smash into bits in tiny 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 bits just like you should smash the like button <laughs> by the way um the broken record is 
good reference, right? Even though I'm complaining, well, I'm not complaining, but I'm speaking of sort of making the best, uh, making do with the best I have in terms of reference and, uh, and images and making it work uh, in general. The reality is you gotta have at least, you know, the most decent reference you can possibly find. And as you can see here, I mean, the photograph, again, found the pose, did some photoshopping, and I mean, loose Photoshop, and I'm not talking, um, I, you know what it is, I don't wanna spend a lot of energy um, trying to comp this, uh, you know, all the bits and pieces, the hand with the with the stake and the body position and the head, um, you know, cause I just essentially, it's three or four photographs cobbled together. I don't wanna spend all my time being a, uh, doing a photo retouch before I go in and start illustrating. The key element to me is, yes, do I have a pleasing composition? And B, do I have enough material? Meaning, is there enough shadow? Is there enough, can I see her features well enough? Can I get a sense of the volumes and the shapes um, that I'm gonna render? Can I see them clear enough so that I can perhaps capture the best image I possibly can with the limited resources that I have, All right? So, barring being able to get the actress <laughs> to pose for me uh, in a studio so that I can snap a photograph then go in and render it. I think this is, uh, you make do, all right? Um, so, back to the show. I, um, as you can see here, I spend a great deal of time working on essentially the jacket. She's wearing this, uh, I think it was either brown or a black leather jacket in the photograph. Um, and I wanted to capture that texture. Uh, reason being is I thought it would help frame um, her and really make you focus in on her face and I thought the darker I made that you know all those rendering all that feathering uh, that's that effect where you see the sort of the lines kind of taper off you know they start really deep and black and they fade they fade and taper off into these like sharp shapes um, ideally what I wanted to do is capture that and in the effort of or in the um, service of framing her face and hair um, I knew that I would throw some sort of background on, on uh, underneath all of this to kind of, um, because again, she's blonde and um, her hair wouldn't stand out so much. And I did a lot of really, really fine lines. Hope you can kind of see them um, in her hair. And I, in addition to um, wanting to capture the hair and it be blonde, I didn't want it to be sort of faded off into the background or have, have insufficient weight so that you wouldn't even really see her. And I knew it was gonna be a line art drawing. I knew I wasn't gonna um, paint or color in um, her flesh or her hair color or even the jacket or anything. So it was vital that I uh, used the reference and found all the lines that I thought would help um, bring out her face. And even at this point, if you notice right there, I actually um, selected her face. And again, I do all this in Procreate, by the way. So it's a digital sketch. So it's it's helpful to be able to add in um, the deficient areas and to be able to uh, alter and make those work. But I don't know if you notice the face is more um, intensely rendered, or I should say darker. The lines are, are clearer and you can see her or facial features clearer. And the reason is I essentially selected that area and duplicated that layer and, and it basically doubled up. It made um, the lines much thicker and blacker. Um, and if you notice now you can see her face and now it has the proper intensity and now is the point where I add the background. This is to really hammer home, um, you know, the shape of her head and hair and for it to really stand out and to, to bring emphasis where it needs to be most. And again, that is the center of the piece, which is her facial features. And this is me just putting a little more line weight into the lines, which is to me, if you're gonna work on a line art drawing, you definitely wanna be really mindful of the line weight. And if you want to know all about it, please go back and watch some of my uh, previous videos. I'm a line art, line art, like, um, I don't know, stand, basically. I love rendering in line art. And I love being able to capture the line weights. And I suggest you do the same. So, that's that. Sarah Michelle Geller as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Again, don't complain about the materials you have. Just make it work. All right. Sketchy Goichi. Live your moment. Happy sketching, y'all. Be sure to follow me on the socials. Please do click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.
Peace.